ground plan is the outermost plan of it, structure of it, without cellular details. The first layer that you can see is epiblema. They are not called as epidermis, they are called as epiblema because they do not have cuticle layer. And you find here and there the epiderm epiblema cells, they are having unicellular extensions which we call it as root hairs. Okay, this zone we call it as the cortex. The innermost layer of cortex we call it as the yellow line, what you can see, we call it as endodermis. Endodermis is a single layer of barrel shaped cells which are having deposition of a chemical called as suberin. So that process of deposition of suberin we call it as suberinization process. Suberin are present in this barrel shaped endodermal cells. And only in the cells which are opposite to this xylem, they are having the endodermal cells do not have the Casparian thickenings. Casparian thickenings are due to the presence of suberin. So they won't have the Casparian thickenings. We call such cells as passage cells. Okay. Just opposite to the xylem elements. So the innermost, the blue colored line, what you can notice is the pericycle, a single layered pericycle is present. Now you can see the pink colored one, these are the xylem. What type of xylem they have? They have the protoxylum towards the endodermis, metaxylum towards the pit or medulla. Okay. So what do you call this arrangement as? Exarch arrangement. We call this arrangement as? Exarch arrangement. Alternating to this xylem are the phloem elements. You have the phloem elements. Xylem and phloem are altering with each other. They are present in separate radii, isn't it? Xylem is present in separate radii. Phloem is present in separate radii. What do you call this condition as? Radial vascular bundle. What type of xylem they have? Four patches of xylem, four patches of phloem. Tetrarch condition. And they are XR, E-X-A-R-C-H. Why is it called as XR? Because protoxylem is towards the endodermis, metaxylem is towards the pit. So we call such an arrangement as XR. So most of the dipods here in this ED and this it is tetra. But some of the dipods they might also have XR condition. Where they might have six patches of xylem, six patches of chlorine. That is what you have to remember about. This is the ground plan of the dipod group. Ground plan. Now what we are going to do is enlarge it. Okay. We enlarge this to study the cellular details. Here we have enlarged completely this there. So you have an outermost layer called as epiblema. Okay. But in your books they give it as epidermis layer. Epiblema is there. And you have this uh, layer of cells which we call it as the uh, cortex. Okay. Cortex leads to the innermost layer of cortexes endodermoid cells, barrel shaped cells, endodermis cells are barrel shaped cells, they are single layer and endodermis has thickenings, what do you call those thickenings as? Casparian thickenings. What are these Casparian thickenings having? They are deposited with suberin. This process we call it as suberinization. Suberin is, doesn't allow water to enter inside. The water entry is through this cells and it reaches the passage cell. Passage cell is exactly opposite to the xylem elements and they do not have this superin or Casparian thickening serum. So water can enter through only those passage cells. Okay? These are all things that you have to remember about them. This is protoxylum is towards the endodermis. You might find the smaller xylem elements. Metaxylem is towards the pit. Here pit is very small. Okay, so metaxylem is uh, towards the pit. Pit is parenchymatous in nature. Then you have altering with this xylem, you have this condition of phloem. So radial vascular phloem. Altering with xylem, there is phloem. Again, alternating with phloem is the xylem. 
alternating with xylem is flowing. So it goes on. So there are four patches of xylem, four patches of flowing. So this is a tetrad condition. What you have to remember here exactly is they are radial vascular bundle. Then they are having tetrad condition. What else? XR. EXARCH. So these are important things that you have to remember regarding the uh, SHRI, this entire enclosure where they are having the vascular xylem and phloem, we call this enclosure as steel. So steel is what type? Radial steel. They are tetrarch in nature because they have alternating patch of xylem and phloem. Then XR because protoxylum is towards the endodermis, metaxylum is towards the pith. Pith is small or it might be absent. In this case, pith is small. Okay. So these are certain things that you have to remember about. Phloem and the alien it will be having phloem consists of sieve tube companion cell. You can see this dotted layers. They are sieve tube surrounding them are the companions as they are also found associated with the parenchyma so they are called as phloem parenchyma they are associated with sclerenchyma phloem fibers okay all this you can notice it in this phloem part of it and in between this xylem and phloem the parenchymatous layer what is there we call it as conjunctive tissue so those labeling isn't there uh, so but you have to remember parenchyma which is found in between the xylem and phloem patch. What do we call that parenchyma as? Conjunctive tissue. You can remember conjunctivitis, chenaeis or metaseis. That viral disease we call it as conjunctivitis, red eyes. Okay. That is different, but the name is same. Conjunctive tissue. You can just remember about this aspect of dicot root, anatomy of dicot root. During examination, you are expected to draw this ground plan and a section enlarged. You will not draw the complete thing. Section enlarged you can draw. So pericycle is single layer. You also notice this single layer pericycle. Later during dicot roots also undergo secondary growth. The cambium is produced from this pericycle. Lateral roots and cambium are produced from the pericycle of dicot root. Later we will discuss about that. Okay, now we will compare to that of next one as the anatomy of monocot root. As you already know, it is a fibrous root system. Okay, and we have taken the example of Zia base. Zia base is base. Jola. So we have taken that example. Now, when you look into the ground plan, so what do you notice? They are having an outermost layer epiblema. They are also having root hairs. Okay, innermost layer they are innermost cortex. We call it as endodermis, single layer endodermis. Then next to that endodermis you have the pericycle layer and you are having patches of xylem and phloem alternating. The number of xylem and phloem patches are many. They are not countable like four or six. They are many. So what do you call this condition as? Polyarch. So the steel is polyarch. Why is it polyarch? Because they have many patches of xylem and phloem. Okay. Pith is large. Apart from that, polyar, then they are XR. Radial, it is radial vascular bundle. Why do you call this vascular bundle as radial? Because xylem and phloem are not present together, they are present on separate radii. Xylem and phloem are present on separate radii, so we call it as radial vascular bundle. So you can notice in the ground plan they have many patches of xylem alternating with many patches of phloem. So they have this radial vascular metal polyarch condition. Poly means many. Many patches of xylem and phloem. And they have XR. Why is it XR? Protoxylem is towards the endodermis, metaxylem is towards the pit. Now this ground plan, when we enlarge it under this and observe it under microscope, you can notice the cellular details. What are the cellular details that you can notice is the outermost epiblema layer, they don't have cuticle or maxi layer and some of the cells of this epiblema, they produce unicellular root hairs. 
root haze absorb water. When we come to plant physiology, I'll discuss about it again. Okay. Then the next layer you find the hypothermal layer where you have this almost uh, what you call it as the uh, polenchymatous layer you can notice. Then there is a parenchyma. Cortex is made up of this type of cells, hypodermal cells. It is almost made up of polenchymatous cells. Then there is parenchyma. The innermost layer of cortex, what do we call it as? Endodermis. Single layered barrel shaped cells. These barrel shaped cells they are having Casparian thickenings. What are Casparian thickenings? Deposition of superin. Superin is hydrophilic. You should understand that. And you can find that there are certain cells where they are placed dot. What does it indicate? They are all cells without the Casparian thickenings. They allow the entry of water directly into the xylem. So we call the cells as passive cells. Water will not enter through all the endodermal cells. Water enters the stream through the passive cells. You should remember. Passive cells do not have Casparian thickenings. The next layer is the pericycle. A single layer pericycle is there. And you can notice the protoxylum, metaxylum. There are many elements of protoxylum and metaxylum. So the xylem is there. Can you notice this green color thing, small patches, they are all nothing but phloem with sieve tube and companion cell as well as phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. All of them will be noticed in this patch of phloem. So there is a xylem alternating with phloem. Xylem alternating with phloem. So there are many patches of xylem and phloem. That's the reason we call this steel as radial vascular bundle. Then they are having what type of uh, uh, xylem and phloem arrangement? Poly R and XR. Fifth, can you notice the fifth? Fifth is very large. Isn't it? Fifth is large. And they are having what type of cells? Parenchymatous cells. So this is what you have to remember the differences between monocot root and dicot root. Majorly you have to concentrate on the stila description. Steel in case of dicot root is radial vascular bundle, tetrarch to exa. We have studied the example of sunflower, Elianthus, annuus. Whereas in monocot root, we have studied the example of zia maize or maize. The steel in case of monocot root is radial vascular bundle, polya, many patches of xylem and phloem. Pith is large, whereas in dicot root, pith is small or it can be absent. So this is what you have to remember regarding the anatomy of dicot root and anatomy of monocot root. Okay,